so um I wasn't planning on going live just now. I just decided to randomly jump on live. So um, if you are worried that this is the book club live, it's not. This is the live before the live that's going to happen later for the book club. Um, but I was just making something or starting to make on some make something. I'll show you in a second. But um, and while I was standing here doing this little task, I'm like, I could talk to my friends. So um, anyways, I just jumped online uh, on live to say hi. So, hi, <laughs> but um, I picked these today. Are these weeds? Do you call them weeds? Are they weeds in your yard right now? So, um, these are dandelions and um, I picked like four cups worth and then I stole my little neighbor girl and she came over and helped me and we got a cute little picture of our little hand because um, I love littles and hands and pictures but anyways I'm going to be making um dandelion jelly um which tastes like honey and um anyways so I'm sitting here standing here whatever and I'm cutting the green part off of the yellow part and so it was taking a while and I was kind of bored so I thought I would just jump on here and say hello and kind of do this while I'm going um this has to seep overnight so you won't get to see the jelly being made all the way today but um anyways I'm just taking a pair of scissors see if they're they already have the yellow little leaves all over them so this is what I had started with so far and I am taking the little green parts off as much as I can I'm trying not to be too OCD about it because I'm a little particular about things um so I'm trying to leave or get as much as the green off but not sit here and pick every little single tiny thing um where do you live that you have dandelions we live in the Seattle area and like in the last week like dandelions like crazy in our yards um we had a pet bunny and we have chickens and so we don't spray our yard at all because we don't want our chickens um when they're free ranging and stuff to get any well we don't want any chemicals and that kind of stuff um so i don't know if you can see that so i took most of the leaves off of there without being totally totally ocd about it but um Oh, anyways, so in the last week, it's been crazy where we have tons of dandelions, and I just went out quickly. It probably took me like five minutes to pick four cups worth, and um, before we mow for the first time for the spring, we haven't done that yet. Um, oh, somebody still has tons of snow. We sometimes have a late frost, um, but normally if we get any snow after the beginning of March, is pretty unusual. Um, but today was the first day that wasn't raining and I actually wanted to go outside and do this. So it wasn't on my plan for the day at all. And it was just not raining. And I was just like, I want to go do this. I was thinking about it last year um, and never got around to doing it before they kind of disappeared for the season. And um, kept looking at all these homesteader blogs and different things and seeing how beneficial the dandelion um, honey jelly is and so um, it's actually good for you and then I use um, Pomona's this is oh it's backwards it's in my Amazon cart but this is why you can use lower sugar when you're making jam and jellies than um, with the typical brands <laughs> so somebody said it's time for you to move to Washington um just no we haven't had a sunny day in weeks and so today was sunny for the first time so I would rather move somewhere where there was snow and sun snow and sun not gray for months but anyways I'm just here popping these little green parts off and here to answer any questions since I'm on here um we do have a patreon call tonight at seven o'clock our time Seattle time Pacific time um where we're going to be talking about the book and we're going to be, I'm talking about some other jellies and different things and preserving berries and kind of fun things but um, I was just bored and I thought I would jump on here and say hi and see if you guys had any questions while I was doing that so I'm going to just scroll and see and um, yeah if you have questions for me I am here so um, I just have wanted to get a little clip um, for YouTube because I'll probably end up making a YouTube video about this and um, if I'm just if I'm talking to you guys it feels like I am talking to my friends 
And so my YouTube videos turn out better than when I'm just randomly talking to myself. So, um, Chrissy, are you going to be on the Patreon call? Yay! <laughs> Tonight, um, she just said, and the hearts on here, like, always get me. Like, that's like the best thing in the world. Um, oh, the pretty blues. Oh, I missed it. I was messaging you about something. Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> You're the one that like said last night that um, my husband looked like Joey for friends. And so this is so funny. So this morning I get up and I, because um, we thought it was funny as a family, we laugh. He always stands like this too, like with his hands like that. And so anyways, this morning I get up and I hear him in the office talking and then I go in and I say hi to him. He's wearing a red and black like flannel shirt like the Joey picture yesterday or the man with the flannel, whatever. The Matt LeBlanc picture. <laughs> and I, I couldn't even. I'm like, I can't even. I was laughing so hard. Like, he went and dug that flannel out just to have a matching picture with <laughs> Matt LeBlanc. So, I think we're going to put that on a story or something and let you guys vote how much you think he <laughs> looks like him. But um, I just thought it was hilarious. Um, he knew that... <laughs> that he has friends from work um that watch and so um different things and knew that he was probably going to get teased at work um about my story yesterday it's probably still up because it happened last night but um anyways like i can't even with him sometimes so, yeah we teased that he looks like old joey now that um he looks more like a malik blanc now than he did earlier like when we were younger but um it's just it's just all hilarious. We think it's hilarious. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. He totally had said, how you doing? He's been saying it all day. Like, how you doing? <laughs> so, yeah. He is hamming this up today. I'm having fun with it. I did. Uh, you never know. But I did find uh, Matt LeBlanc's um, uh, Instagram page and actually tagged him in it. So, you know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Um, you never know what you're going to get famous for. I got famous for strawberries, so, which was just a random kind of thing. But anyways, now I remember. I answer, see, now you know that I truly do answer every single question and comment and try to read things. And um, when I see your guys' names again, then I recognize them. But that is me. So um, we do have a team. There's um, seven on the team and they all do different other parts of it so I can spend more time answering questions and doing what I love. Um, how I, okay. Hi, do I wash my zucchini like cucumbers? Yes. Um, baby frog is asking that. Um, if they are like cucumber size ones, then you put those in the refrigerator after you wash them in the crisper drawer. The blog post, it's in the book. <laughs> um, I bought it now. It That's on Amazon. But, um, if you're looking for more information and don't have the book yet <laughs> um it's also cucumbers are also oh you're talking about zucchini but cucumbers are also in the blog post um the one that was the salad like new year's resolution salads so if you go to crosslegacy.com backslash blog then look for the new year's salad new year's resolution salads i don't know it was like the first one we did in january cucumbers are on that anyways all of that to say, if you have cucumbers that are like, you know, six to eight inches that you buy at the grocery store, you want to keep those in your crisper drawer and treat them like cucumbers. And then in the summertime, like we have cucumber or not cucumbers, we have zucchini that we grow in the garden. And those um, are like the, I call them leg size, you know, like the big um, zucchinis. Those we cure. Um, the outside of them because they have a thicker skin and I keep those in the um, in the pantry somebody said I got my birthday money so I'm going to order the book yay so tomorrow if you're on um, the new their newsletter list the email list yeah the email list whatever you call it if you're on the email list and you get the newsletter tomorrow and you've bought the book make sure you reply back on that and um, we're sending out a free PDF um, that you can't print out in the book um, that is pretty cool. It's the chart that has all of the, um, it, it's a chart that says like, use this with a paper towel and store this in the fridge and this one gets stored with water and this one needs that. So it's like a whole printable chart that is like the last page of the book and we're sending that out to 
to people that have ordered the book and send us their order numbers on the email list. So make sure you go to thecrosslegacy.com and sign up for the emails. Um, and then you can print that off. So that's the only way to get that printed off because it's like copyrighted. So, um, so we're doing that. And it's just a special thing right now at the beginning of the book launch. The book just launched a couple days ago on Sunday, officially it launched on Sunday. And so it's not something that'll be available forever, um, but we're doing it right now. So it's kind of exciting, but um, tomorrow in the newsletter, I'll say that. So where do I send the order number two? So tomorrow you'll get, if you're on the email list, so if you're not on the email list tonight, go sign up on the email list um, at thecrosslegacy.com. It'll say subscribe to email list. Tomorrow the newsletter will go out and I'll have instructions of there um, how to how to submit your your order number back in. So I'm still just cutting. If you're just joining, I'm just cutting the greens off of the yellows and um, of the dandelions, and then I'm going to boil some water and put it in the dandelions, and then they steep like tea overnight. And then tomorrow I'm going to make jelly with them. So um, one of my neighbors like was honking at me. Like, I was out there picking my dandelions. I look kind of weird. I, I know I did. <laughs> and she was, like, honking at me hi, which is kind of funny because we have, like, never really talked talk in person until we, like, started talking on social media. So, actually, two of my neighbors because I met another one of my neighbors at the Mops group this week um, when I was speaking um, at the Mops group, which is just funny. So, um, I am in person. I am super shy. Um I don't like to like, um, I don't like small talk and chit chatty stuff often. Um, and so it's funny that I get on here and I'm so not shy. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I will talk to you guys all day, but, um, anyways, yeah, we're just making something out of the dandelions, which actually have a great many nutritional benefits. Um, if you go to healthline.com, they've done a really great article, um, and I'll let them state the health benefits so I don't get banned. So just check out the like official looking blogs for health benefits for dandelions, and then that way they don't um, ban me on <laughs> social media. <laughs> so um, somebody just asked if I live on a farm. Um, no, um, we live in a neighborhood in a cul-de-sac, and um. We have chickens and we have um, a garden, a backyard garden, and um, and it might get bigger. We heard um, from somebody today that wants to help make our garden bigger, which is exciting. So um, we should have the details for that pretty soon. And it's another company in Texas. I swear there's something going on with um, Texas things in Texas reaching out to us. Like it's like the fifth thing now from something in Texas. So um we just want to like, you know, somebody sponsor us and like, you know, we would totally do a road trip and go to Texas and see all the things. So, um, anyways, but us live, we live in a neighborhood, like in a neighborhood in a small house in a neighborhood. And, um, we have, we have chickens in our town. You're supposed to have three chickens. Tractor supply sells them by six. So, um, <laughs> and we have a backyard garden and, um, in the summertime, most of the things that I grow, we eat fresh. And then all the things that I can, um, I normally get those from a farmer's market. And I buy them by the case or for from family who grows other things that have bigger areas than we do. But I grew up on a huge farm. And it's my goal to move back to a farm. Um, which is funny if it's still playing today. But my story from yesterday was... From 2019 and Mike and I dreaming about um, having a big barn again and him wanting a big shop and I want baby goats <laughs> so <laughs> I want baby goats pretty bad <laughs> so, it hasn't ended I've been watching wanting them for years so um, anybody local that has baby goats that you know want me to hang out with them you know just message me I'll, I'll go hang out and play with baby goats so um, anyways this it's taking a little bit longer than I thought. But, um, again, I'm just trying to cut this green part off and leave the yellow part, but um, I'm really particular about things and it said that it tastes better if you get most of the green off. And so if you've seen me like pick little leaves off of 
strawberries or anything like that um this is probably taking a little bit longer than the normal human being so i i know i'm particular about things um so i'm sure somebody else would do this much quicker than me but i'm trying to get like all those little extra ones off um so I'm like not to the point where I'm pulling out tweezers, but I totally could. You like it. So. Um, somebody said, I saw that story cute. He said, you can have goats and screamed. Oh yeah, I totally did. And that video was from 2019, um, which was just <laughs> totally fun. Um, it had popped up as a memory. Um, yeah, <laughs> so he had said it once um, and I was like, oh, no, you need to say that again so I can videotape you. And then he was, like, teasing that, like, oh, Michael, if you're watching this, you were superimposed. And I'm like, no, you weren't. <laughs> but um, it was just fun. But anyways, I'm going to see. Um, oh, Little Schoolers Child Care joined. Um, that's kind of cool. I actually have a preschool teaching degree and very much love littles. Very much so. Very, very much so. I have a total heart for zero to five. Like, toddlers and babies are my jam. Um, okay. So, I asked about the farm. We live in Seattle. I answered that. Or, not in Seattle, but, like, 45 minutes out of Seattle. Depending on traffic. It can be two hours. You never know. Um, my screen's frozen, so give it a second to... Okay. So I'm just here for questions while I'm making the beginning stages of dandelion jelly. I keep wanting to call it jam, jelly. And then tonight at seven, it's five o'clock right now, we're doing a live um, for the Patreon members that um, are, it's part of a book club. So it's kind of fun. So they get exclusive time with me and I get to see their faces and get to know them and um, and it's pretty neat. This is turning my hand yellow, just so you know. Um, we are doing, ooh, that's interesting. We're doing a blog post next week. This week is on, this Sunday is on gluten-free pizza, but the one for the week after, so it comes out before Easter, is on, um, what is it? natural food dyes. So now I'm kind of curious with my hand turning yellow if um, I should try it with the, to make a yellow with, dandelions and see how that turns out because almost everybody has dandelions right now um i did leave plenty of dandelions in the yard and we have our tulips and daffodils blooming now for the bees so i normally feel a little guilty like cutting the yard before the flowers start blooming so i made sure we did have um we did have flowers growing before we well it's been raining but um before we cut the yard for the first time. So that's important to me to make sure that the honeybees have something yellow, right, as they're coming back out again. And um, hopefully this weekend it doesn't rain. I should have done it today because it's not raining, but I still have my potato starts that we normally start around St. Patrick's Day here. And I need to get those outside too. So I always say, give or take a week, <laughs> but just depending on the thing. Um, oh, somebody's sending me pictures. From the speaking event this weekend how exciting so this week i keep thinking that was a weekend but um i was talking at a church on a tuesday and that always feels like a sunday so um which was so much fun and so neat um okay thank you for teaching me so much i have blueberries mushrooms and grape tomatoes in a jar right now oh awesome so I didn't start putting the mushrooms in a jar until this fall when somebody was asking me about it. I've always, um, well, my preferred way is to dehydrate them um, because I'm the only one that eats them. Mike does not like mushrooms. Um, but I like dehydrating them and then I eat them like chips. Um, but they smell horrible when you are dehydrating them, for one. And um, this year somebody was asking me in the fall if they would work in a jar and so instead of storing them in a paper bag like I normally do I started storing them in a jar with a brown paper or with a paper towel and that um, that really helped um, keep them longer so um, you don't wash them and you don't do anything you either put them in a brown paper bag in the fridge um, 
which I still think that might be the best best way, but I like how they look in a jar. And if they look pretty, then I'm more apt to want to eat them. And then um, the second way is in a mason jar in the, um, oh, <laughs> in the fridge with the paper towel. So she's on vacation. One of our team members, I tease her about it all the time. And um, you probably heard me say the story, but you know, she's not gonna hear this right now and tease me anyways, so I can tease her. But um, she called me and she's like, my mushrooms didn't work and I don't know why. And you said that they were gonna work. And she was like all upset, <laughs> not upset, but she was just like, we had to go buy more mushrooms because I had dinner planned. And so I'm like, okay, like, tell me what you did. How did you do it? Well, I put it in the brown paper bag and when I went to go get it out of the pantry, um, they weren't good. Like they were gross after a couple days. And I was like, in the fridge they need to be in the fridge <laughs> so um yeah soon as soon as she knew that like thought about it then oh yeah and then the ones that you see on my shelf in my pantry when I post pictures those are dehydrated ones so um now I just like to clarify <laughs> that the mushrooms stay in the um in the fridge so yeah I am just I'm not officially OCD but I would be surprised. Um, I'm just really particular about things. I did own a housekeeping company for 15 years and um, they, my clients really liked it because I was so particular about things. But um, it is hard not to try to get every single one of the green ones, things off of here. But I did wash these in vinegar water before I started cutting them and just to make sure that I had no little bugs or floaties that came in from out from the yard. So. Um, let me scroll and see. Okay, I'm keeping my grape tomatoes oop, in a paper bag. Oh, I'm keeping my grape tomatoes in a paper bag like my mushrooms in a paper bag. I buy from Costco and they last two weeks. Oh, okay. So if you keep your um, cherry tomatoes in a jar instead of a paper bag, they'll last for a month. So we just used the last of ours last night. And they were actually six weeks old. Those were from February 1st. So we're just getting ready to go grocery shopping again. Um, I went on March 1st. Normally I go every three weeks. Um, but I just said it. I'm going to go tomorrow. Um, which is more than three weeks. Um, I could have went on Monday and I just kept putting it off. And today I decided to make dandelion jam instead of jelly instead of I'm going to the store. But anyways, so this weekend, probably tomorrow, um, I'm going to go grocery shopping and then we will be doing more videos and stuff showing you how I wash the things that I'm going to eat for the next month. And um, one of our farmer's markets and our local market um, is starting to open up. And so I might be peeking down there too because I love the farmer's market. But um, so we keep, oh, somebody was asking about this. I keep this little notebook. It's always kind of within reach. Sorry. <laughs> but I keep this little notebook. It has peaches on it. Um, on our counter or just handy. And this fits in my purse when I go grocery shopping. And just as the month progresses, we write down things. Um, Mike was like getting excited about grocery shopping last night and he was writing like five things down on it. Um, but anyways, I just kind of keep that on a handy all the time and so then we remember to write things down so it's like my March April list right now which do you want to hear what's on my we will have produce um on our list but there's mayo mustard Mike likes chimichangas um he eats them for lunch a lot um so he added honey roasted peanuts and semi sweet chocolate chips and there's gallon sized bags and tortillas and oranges, Italian sausage, a bag of tortilla chips, which I get like one bag every time we go, once a month, and cabbage, because last night I had asked people if they were interested in learning how to make sauerkraut and like had like a hundred responses of yes. So anyways, so that's like what we're buying for this grocery shopping trip and then produce. So I kind of just always get the same things for produce. Um, how do I keep my grapes? Oh, the grapes are in the book too. Um, those, if you don't want to buy the book, no, I'm just teasing. Um, if you go to the Cross Legacy, no, let's see. If you go to YouTube and go to the Cross Legacy and produce video number one, 
I talk about grapes at the very beginning of that. So um, I normally I normally snip them um, with these handy dandy scissors. I sip, snip them into like snack sized little bunches and then I wash them in the vinegar wash and put them in a gallon size um, jar with paper towel and they will last, if we don't eat them, they will last like 30 to 40 days depending on how fresh they were when you got them. So. Okay, somebody said, thank you, I'll put the tomatoes in a jar. So those are cherry tomatoes. Summer tomatoes I do not put in the fridge. Um, those, so it's just cherry tomatoes I put in the fridge. But yeah, they'll last for at least a month if you put them in a jar and wash them beforehand so it kills off any mold spores. Uh, yeah, dandelion tea. So I'm making, look, my fingers are getting yellow. Um, I'm cutting off the little green parts. And then I just pick these outside, like we don't have animals and, um, well we do, we have chickens, but they're in the backyard. But um, uh, we don't spray our yard at all, so make sure that you don't spray, because that's important. But um, anyways, so I'm making dandelion jelly. So tonight it stays in the fridge overnight as dandelion um, tea, and then tomorrow from the tea we make dandelion um, jelly. And then I'll be tagging a couple different blogs um, from my friends that are on the Lisa Bass um, uh, Create a Dream blog course with me. I was trying to think of what that name was. So anyways, there's a couple other um, people on there. Um, Julie from Keeper of My Home has done a video and then a couple other people have done blog posts. So when I, when I make the final blog post, um, picture post tomorrow, I'll make sure to tag them. But if you want to know more about why you should um, eat dandelions or have dandelions in your diet, um, go to healthline.com and um, that's not on social media and they can tell you all the health benefits to that and they won't get banned. <laughs> so um, anyways, healthline.com and then just search dandelions and um, and it'll pop up. So. Um, I have to be careful what I say on social media, um, but they're good for you, and they're outside in your yard, and I left some for the bees. How about that? <laughs> so, uh, censorship is a funny thing sometimes, and um, we don't want to get my um, my YouTube, or my, not my YouTube, my, well, any of my channels. We don't want to get um, my Instagram channel blocked. So, um, somebody asked how I keep fresh spinach. So fresh spinach is also in the book. Um, and which you can go to the crosslegacy.com backslash book. Um, and it's right at the top or go to Amazon, um, in the Kindle store and it's on the bestsellers list, but, um, it's called, I bought it now what? And, um, but you can also go to the crosslegacy.com and, um, go to the blog and there's a spinach post. So all those other places, but I'll talk about it too. But um, I wash it in the vinegar wash. And then um, if you have a salad spinner, use a salad spinner and it helps. Sorry. With spinach, I do rinse it afterwards after I have washed it. Um, I don't rinse everything but spinach and lettuce and strawberries um, for sure. I wash afterwards. But... Um, Tell totally you forgot what I was saying. So spinach, you wash it and rinse it. And then if you have a salad spinner, use a salad spinner. It helps the drying time, like cut in half. And then I dry it out on a towel. And then when I put it in the um when I put it in the fridge, I normally use a stasher bag. I thought I had one. Here, I have this is a tiny one. <laughs> it's dirty. But um this is a stasher bag. They're also like listed on our blog when you go to the Cross Legacy. But these are silicone and they're airtight and they go, this particular brand will go from, um, well you can make popcorn in it. You can like do it in the oven and microwave and stuff. But if the dishwasher, that one goes in the dishwasher. So sometimes if you get random ones that you bought some at, you know, Marshall's or whatever, and then you have some that are the good ones, then whoever's washing dishes, doesn't know it might put one of the ones that can't go in the dishwasher in the dishwasher and I don't really want to replace my dishwasher so I do buy the stasher brand um, ones um, comparable to a Ziploc bag like they they make them last so much longer um, so or I store it in glass so 
Um, I would definitely store it in either one. If it's in the refrigerator, then I put it, um, I have yellow stuff everywhere. If it's in the refrigerator, um, then I normally take the bag back out. And then when I put it in the freezer, I'll sometimes put it in a Ziploc bag. Normally if it's in a Ziploc bag, it means I have too many bags of spinach in my freezer. So um, there's a kind of funny video about that. But anyways, um, when I put it in the freezer, I take the paper towel back out of it. So if I'm going grocery shopping again and I wanted to buy more spinach, um, then I put it in a bag and put it in the freezer. I We used to have smoothies almost every day and I had oral surgery and I can't have smoothies for a couple months. And so I keep forgetting about it and then keep buying spinach. So. And people keep asking about me, that asking me about it, and so I keep wanting to buy spinach so I can talk about it. But anyways, it is one that's in the book. Somebody said, "Wow, thank you." I don't know what I said that was wow, but <laughs> um, somebody else said, "Congratulations on all your success." Thank you. I just this is all God. <laughs> so um, I never ever thought I would be talking to people all around the world about random things I have in my fridge, um, but. It's what has happened and I truly feel blessed to be able to be in a spot where I am getting to influence so many families and helping them with their grocery budgets and helping them have more food in their house and feed their families better and just um, <laughs> doing research to do blog posts and stuff. I didn't even know some of these things. but. Um, for one, the average American family throws out 30 to 40% of the groceries they buy. So like people keep saying like groceries cost so much and the inflation and all those kind of things. Like that's not exactly the first thing that needs to be fixed in like your family's budget. It's making sure that the food that you're bringing home, you're actually using it and not tossing it because that could be a 30 to 40% change in your grocery budget, which is huge. Like I did not realize that throwing away groceries was such a huge epidemic, like a huge epidemic until I started getting families that were like, I just stopped buying produce. I just stopped doing this. I just, you know, and I'm like, what, what do you mean you stopped buying produce? Like, I just didn't understand it until getting to meet all you guys and learning your stories and stuff about how hard it is to keep um, produce items fresh and um, being able to teach you guys these tricks that help you um, keep it fresh longer so you're eating it and it's not coming home to die. <laughs> Sorry, we've been saying. And then with the banana trick this week um, that we posted about being able to keep a peeled banana, I mean, even if you can keep a peeled banana for the next day, like... I don't know how many times we had littles in our house and they would want to open the banana and not actually eat the banana. Like that was a huge thing. Like once they like learn how fun it is to open the banana and to be able to keep a banana for an extra snack, like just four more hours, <laughs> you know, but especially like to be able to keep a banana for two to three days after it's been opened up, like that's crazy. And doing research after we figured this out and put it in the book <laughs> um that we found out that bananas are the number one um wasted produce item in the entire world and they're the number one um produce no the number one produce item or the the produce item that has the biggest impact environmentally on the world because every single one has to come on a ship to go somewhere um they they're not grown locally for 99 percent of the world so um the fact that they have to be shipped they are not grown locally for everybody they're the number one eaten item and the number one thrown away item like the number one thing that people have in their grocery cart every week you know or every couple days um it's just been amazing to um be able to realize that we're teaching families how to have them for a little bit longer and then and now because we been doing that since like november when we started talking about bananas but then now to keep a half a banana it's like it's so crazy so i just found out from another newspaper in the uk so that'll be like article number 25 <laughs> um that they are doing a banana post on us which is kind of cool so um let me see i have all this yellow stuff in my hand 
I'm probably talking more than I'm cutting here. Uh, I see a Seattle City girl joined. Oh, my husband realized I was not just randomly talking to myself. I see he is on here. So he missed, I think, um, when we were teasing him about looking like Joey. So he'll have to rewind that. Um, let's see. Um, I started following you months ago and your tips are so helpful. I will I will not wash my fruits and veggies any other way again. <laughs> I've tried like other ways over the years, um, but I just always go back to vinegar and I like that vinegar can be bought anywhere around the world, um, which is really important to me. Um, last weekend, we had somebody reach out from South Africa that wants to help they want me to teach like Zoom classes for their, um, for their school in South Africa. Like I'm in Seattle, like it's so cool. But um, so yeah, I like that it can be bought anywhere. Um, I should have mentioned this when I was talking about the spinach, but baked spinach is the most recalled item. So even though it says that it's like triple washed or whatever, um, it's still the most recalled item out of any of the other produce items that get recalled doesn't mean don't stop eating spinach um but when you're washing it in vinegar and you know that you're doing it yourself and at your home um vinegar kills listeria and that's what um that's why spinach gets recalled most of the time so just doing that extra step that one you know even if it says it's been washed three times i still wash it um i don't trust it <laughs> and um and i don't have to worry about um listeria so much so, um, but vinegar does kill listeria. Okay, let's see. Any other questions? I haven't seen what are your tips for raspberries. Oh, uh, raspberries are in the book too. <laughs> um, but if you go to um, if you go to YouTube and the Cross Legacy, there's a December live produce video, and I'm wearing a yellow sweater. So look for my yellow sweater and the. Um, Oh, somebody's from Australia. Um, look for the the December produce video, like a live event from December, in a yellow sweater, and I and I show the raspberries and how I do it with the water to make sure that they don't crumble. But my big thing with raspberries is when they're drying, make sure they look like a hat and not a cup. Um, if you have them on the plate or cloth or whatever, and they look like cups, they are going to fill up like cups. So. Um, make sure you check that out. So that is on the Cross Legacies YouTube page, the December video. I'm in a yellow sweater. I'm at somebody else's house, but it, it's a white kitchen, so it kind of looks like it's my kitchen. Um, and then there's also another one from November, a produce haul, and I do it in there too. And that one's in a darker kitchen. And um, that again is at somebody else's house and um, like a live audience, like 20 some women showed up to hear me talk about um, produce items before I went viral. So they all signed up to come to learn my hacks even before like everybody else said I was cool. So <laughs> it was kind of fun. Um, it was just a bunch of people from a neighborhood, a town group of mine. And um, oh, I didn't know any of them. I didn't even know the hostess. So it was it was really fun to be able to do that. So there's like six hours of produce videos um, start to finish on YouTube. And now there's like 60 videos on YouTube. But those those first ones, I go through like a whole grocery haul start to finish. Um, I'm wondering, what time is it in Australia? It's 5.30 p.m. here. Um, somebody just asked me what I'm cutting up. These are dandelions. I'm cutting the bottom green part. Um, off of it and trying to keep as many as the green out of this as I can. Um, I honestly, I want to get some tweezers and do it even better. And so I figured I better get on a live and just talk to you guys instead of being super particular about this. But um, anyways, I'm going to be making tomorrow. It needs to seep all night long. I'm going to be making dandelion, dandelion um, jelly. Yeah, jelly. I always say that backwards. Dandelion jelly. And if you want to know the health benefits of that, go to healthline.com and um, search dandelions. So they have health benefits to that. And I'm not going to say them online on Facebook, but go to Healthline. <laughs> you can you can look dandelions up and it can tell you the health benefits without me getting banned. <laughs> so um okay. 
Okay, so they get moldy so fast, sometimes so fast. So talking about raspberries. So if you wash them the way that I'm teaching, they'll last for two weeks. Um, uh, occasionally they'll last for three weeks, but if I have the choice between eating a raspberry or a strawberry first, I'll eat the raspberries first and then try to leave the strawberries longer because the strawberries will last for three weeks. And the raspberries are, are like two weeks. But um, the raspberries and the bananas are the only things that are in the book out of the 25 items that don't last for sure for three weeks. And um, but both of those could also be frozen. So there's still no reason to have to throw any of the produce items away. I'm just going to rinse my hands real quick because they are getting crazy. Okay, let me see. Somebody's in Toronto. Um, my bestie and I love talking about your tips. Thanks. <laughs> so fun. Like, we need to do like a world tour someday. Like, wouldn't that be fun? And go meet everybody all around the world. Like, it's crazy. Um, so I'm just putting it out there. You never know what's going to happen. So, <laughs> um, okay. What does it taste like or similar to? So this is supposed to taste like honey um, when it's done. I know when um, I was little... Actually, I'm going to rinse my scissors off, too, since I did my hands with the finger. I'm not sponsored by Pampered Chef. I'm just saying these scissors are my favorite because they come apart. And you can put them in the dishwasher. So, anyways, like, I will never have a different kind. Why did I do that so easy the first time? But I love that they come apart. So, if you're doing chicken or something nasty, you can just put them in the dishwasher. But, anyways. These are from Pampered Chef. I think I have a similar one on my Amazon cart, but these are pretty dang cool. Um, anyways, somebody said, oh, what does it taste like? So these taste, this is supposed to taste like honey, and then I'm going to be using it with um, uh, the Pomona's. I don't know if I say that right. This is in my Amazon shop too. Um, this is pectin that you can use with lower sugar. So I... Um, I'm probably going to make this one just with lower sugar or honey. I'm not sure, but then I'm going to make some jam today or tomorrow. I just really want to make some jam. <laughs> I've been talking about it for a couple days. Um, anyways, in the next couple days, I'm going to make that with monk fruit, so it's um, more diabetic friendly. But this brand helps you not have to put as much sugar in, because sometimes it's like four cups of fruit and eight cups of sugar. Like it's crazy when you like really realize how much sugar is and things. So anyways, this brand is on my Amazon cart and you don't have to, it's like half the amount of sugar that you would use in a normal store brand. Um, oh, <laughs> my husband said, Google says it's 11.30 a.m. in Australia. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, that's funny. Uh, let's see. Yes, world tour, like, right? Winnipeg, yeah, yeah. We should make a world tour happen. I don't know, who wants to sponsor me? <laughs> I'm going. I got a feeling uh, we're going to Texas first. So there's just some cool things that have been happening that keep coming in from Texas. So I'm like, anybody with like an RV company want to sponsor me? And I'll be happy to like go and do a road trip and document the whole thing. and stop at fruit stands and talk about things and I don't know all the things but um yeah anywhere I'm, I go anywhere sponsor me <laughs> so, um we did get to go to Tennessee um in January which was really cool and meet some cool people and meet some followers and get to hang out with them for the evening and um met Justin Rhodes and Jill Wigner and um so that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> My husband's like, Richard, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe our 25th anniversary, we just need to get on the road and go somewhere. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's like a couple months away. Who knows? Our lives have completely changed in a couple months. Who knows what a couple more months is going to bring. So, okay. Any more questions? I have a live meeting tonight. Phone call. Fun, funness. Um, so with the Patreon group, and I need to finish these because I'm taking too long with them talking. But these are dandelions. I'm cutting the little greens off. I should be doing it way quicker, but 
I haven't been. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to put them in here and then see how much it fills up to and then add water and then boiling water and then they seep overnight and then tomorrow I'm going to be making dandelion jam. So again, I'm not going to tell you the health benefits for this because of censorship, um, but go to healthline.com and um, look it up for yourself and um, oh, and search dandelions or dandelion benefits and um, that way I won't get banned on Instagram. So anyways, they're healthy for you. Make sure if you're picking them out of your yard, you haven't sprayed them or your neighbors sprayed them with chemicals. So um, anyways, I'm going to head off of here and um, finish this and I will talk to you soon. <laughs> so thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Bye.